Hey y'all, um, happy Father's Day. This is about the greatest father ever, God and his son, Jesus, the salvation plan. God's promise was his son. God provided his son. God's plan was his son. You name it. God's plan for salvation, that's the GPS. But I want to put a little bit of a backdrop in this message. Um, but it was last night. This isn't the backdrop, but it was last night. And one in the morning when I got these scriptures. And the Lord told me it was a Father's Day message. Okay, and it's Philippians 2, 10 through 16. But the backdrop is Philippians 5. So you'll know where I'm coming from. So if it seems like there's some confusion here, it's not. But it might appear that way. And I'll tell you why. Because I haven't been to the doctor yet, but I've had some more um, brain strokes. And last time I had them four years ago, diagnosed with moderate severe brain loss. Okay. So, good evening, walk, guys. Um, look up my message. One of them, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Pretty good about that experience. So, that's the backdrop. Elvis has kind of left the building, and I'm going to the doctor. I went to him for some other stuff. I've got so many medical issues right now. It's like, okay, which one do I pick first? So, that being said, this is the message. So just bear with me. Last night, it was one in the morning, when I couldn't sleep, I woke up, and the Lord told, told me that scripture. And I didn't know, I couldn't, you know, I don't, A, don't usually have the radar anyhow to remember the scriptures that well where they're at. Never have. But now with this, where my brain's at, because I'm literally living out that scripture, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, because I don't have one. Okay, guys, it takes me 10 minutes to make a phone call sometimes. Literally, I'll have a card in front of me, I'll dial the wrong number, area code wrong. Oh, that's an eight instead of a three. Oh, that's the fax number. Pretty challenging. But, I'm still obedient to God. I'm still here, and His grace and mercy, man, I'm living under a mountain of grace right now, guys. So, but this is the message about His Son that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. And if you read through it, it's about Jesus. That's part of that's God's salvation plan. It's also about an ungodly, great, ungrateful nation. And that's us, guys. <laughs> that's where this message is coming from. It's about Father's Day. And it's about a Father's love for his children. That would be us. But we've got to come to get a grip on this, guys. I'm not politicizing this as part of the Father's Day message. But we've got to pray through this. Because if we don't pray, that's the communication. That's what you, you get nothing, guys. You get no guidance, no direction, no leading of the Holy Ghost. You just walk in the flesh. And that's where we're at right now. The vast majority, whether it's the church, the government, the businesses. We've sold out for money as a nation. And I'm going to tell you why it's so important. Because it's not God's will. We, If you read on farther down, it says it's so that we can be the light. Light is it, not to expose it, but it does expose the darkness. But it's to drive it out. To make it flee. And you're not going to get that kind of power and authority if A... You're not praying, 
seeking God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and Word, following the Scriptures, doing the being obedient to what He says, and praying. Because and not, I'm not talking about the popcorn prayers that hit the ceiling and bounce off your head and don't come back. And uh, effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Praying is listening just as much as talking. Probably more. That's the part we don't seem to grasp. We want to pray because we want it our way. Well, what's God's way? Let me get to this part about the nation. Three years ago, people still do. Everybody's cussing and hating Trump. You know, look at some of this stuff right after he got elected. He's not my president, and, you know, the F-bomb was dropped every other word, and he, everything he did was wrong to a lot of people. Still is. I'm not trying to stir up the pot, guys. Hear me out on this. But yet I am. Now it's Biden. Just as many people probably hate him. Cuss him out. Use the F bomb. I, I'll just, this, this is my message, and when you hear it, it'll make some sense. A lot of sense. Why do we have to be Democrats or Republicans? I don't like the saying, you know, I mean, I like the saying, but I don't like the way that it came out in prayer. And it's maybe it's time to throw the baby and the bathwater out. And start afresh. Now it's time to pray. Really pray. Because I don't care what you, how you want to spin it. Well, I won't it didn't matter. Let's face it, guys. Face the reality of it. But it was sold out. Mostly, not mostly, but a lot by the media. For money. We sold out to the Chinese for money. Billions of dollars. All the, There's all kinds of... You don't even have to be a rocket scientist, guys. I'm not trying to come up with some conspiracy theories, okay? We're still trying to figure out who shot JFK and then we land on the moon because the flag blowing the wrong way in the wind. There's no wind on the moon. Okay? It's leaning out on your own understanding. But what I'm saying is... Oh, you see on the, on, the, on the news cycles and on your YouTube feed, I don't watch the news anymore or any kind of where we try to find it. It's all this bickering and division and that's news. The more they, he told so-and-so off, she told so-and-so off. He's, you know, you know what, go Joe Biden or whatever that is saying now. And before it was Trump and the locker up and man, it's a mess, guys. That's the political side of it. Okay, the business side of it is, where's the shortages of the stuff that's real expensive now? In high dollar, no shortages of gas, alcohol, cigarettes. Pick some, you know, anything that's making a lot of money. The nation's artists, retailers, they got a lot of stuff, but it's all the stuff that they can make a bunch of money on, more money on. We can sold out for the almighty dollar. Politicians, too, have done it. That's what I'm trying to say. So this is where my message is going with this, guys. It's time to stand in the gap. And bow now while you can. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because every knee's going to bow. You're going to bow whether you want to or not, regardless. One day. And hopefully it won't be your last. Or hopefully... It won't be a bad day, or hopefully you won't be on the wrong side. Prayerfully, you'll be on his side. Not a Democrat or Republican or all this crazy stuff that's make-believe, honestly. It's unreal. Okay, and I'll tell you why. Okay? This country used to stand for something. Okay? Who... Saw us through World War II. A Democrat. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. 
John F. Kennedy, and yeah, he had a very checkered life. We all know that. The Marilyn Monroe story and all that stuff. He was a pretty good president. And he was a stand-up guy in a lot of ways. But very, like I said, very checkered, so that wasn't good. That part of it wasn't good, but he fought valiantly for this country in World War II. Little plywood boat against big, you know, battleships and, you know, metal, you know, man. He was a, he was a target. Easy target. Look at the history of it. But then this is where I'm going with this. Two other people. One was my, my, my dad, my natural dad. The other one was John McCain. I like John McCain. And I'll tell you why. Not because he was a Republican. Nothing to do with it. Thirteen years old, I'm a little boy, and I watched the man get off a plane, reach down, and just so thankful to be in America. To the ground. Held on the ground. That was etched in my memory. And the dude took a beating, guys, a pummeling. Hanoi Hilton, and this is my message. Who was his dad? Who was his natural father on this earth? An admiral over the Pacific Fleet. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, you know, look at the history, but he was in charge of the whole theater of operation in Vietnam, pretty much. Am I right? And that's who they were after. They, that's why they beat him and put him on TV and, you know, they never, they never intended to kill him, but they brought him close to death so many times to sway his dad's opinion, to sway his dad from stop, to stop the war, to stop the pummeling that they were getting. And that whole war was divisive and this country was in turmoil and when you came back as a soldier, you weren't cool. You got paint thrown on, you spit on, beat up, you called baby killers, and some of them were. The CIA was selling drugs to supply bogus operations or whatever, black clandestine operations, and pumping the stuff into the young GIs. It was a mess, guys. But John stood up when he told him it's time to go home. He said, not to all my men, go first. Some of them never made it, guys. There's a whole list. I think it's 5,000. You can correct me how I'm wrong, but not all of them that were even on the list came home. So there was some that never came home. Still, you know, I'm sure they're passed away now. It was years ago, but it was a mess. He could have just as easily been one of them by that decision. And his dad could have changed and sold all this country. Because as you watch his son be brutalized for years, and he didn't. That was back when men were men. And they knew which bathroom to use. Because they had a little bit of backbone. And then I'm going to go to the Korean War in the 50s. This was my dad. 18. Young kid, this is what God was, was a, he's out, God's always about something. And I'm telling you, this is, a, get some backbone church. This is where I'm going with this. Get some backbone guys and gals. This is where I'm heading with this. And turn your life over to Jesus. But 18, in the Navy, stationed in Japan. Korean War blew up pretty much instantly. Never heard of that place, most of us, till then. My dad was on the first flight out of, out of, out of there because the squadron was called the Lamplighters, and their mission was to drop flares from the Marines because the, chi the Chinese would over, that the Chinese would overrun, or, and the North Koreans, but, you know, it's basically the Chinese, honestly. And, uh, 
tell you why in a second. They would overrun the camp, the camps at night. And when they were 16 hour flights, they would circle, because it took a long time to fly across Japan to Korea and back, and then they'd have to circle the, the battlefield all night. An old rickety boat, that was a boat plane. They were designed to, <laughs> they weren't really good for either, but they flew. You don't land a plane in the ocean but it was capable of it, but it wasn't a very good design. It was just all rickety, but it got them there and it solved the mission. But this is what took place, guys. They would fly around the battlefield. My dad said when they get in into orbit, you see it felt like every gun in the Chinese army was aimed at. Read your history. I think it was Pusan. He was one of the planes that was in one of the, probably one of the planes that was over there. 600 Marines trapped. The Chinese would try to override at night, and this is what they this this is what they think of life. They would just let the bodies pile up. He's, he had a friend that was in infantry. Some of them didn't even have kids that they just had sticks of guns. Bodies would just pile up, eight, ten, twelve feet till they got, could get over the over the wire fence that they had around the encampment. He said. That, the Marines weren't worried about where they could hit anybody. They were worried about they having enough ammunition to hit everybody. That's their that's their value of life. I only have one. And we sold out to them for money. Don't believe me? Go to one of the nation's largest retailers. Look at how much stuff is made over in China. Or pick any, any place. Car lots. Anywhere you go. Your cell phones. Buying up properties, businesses, lands, business ventures, so much stuff that, you know, I don't want the money. We sold out for the dollar, guys. This kind of thing, fire a shot. And everybody's bickering about stuff and dividing the country even more. And our political system, and our business system, they're hiding behind all that. Cause they're making a bunch of money. They don't care. Greed. The idol of money. So, my point is, and I've said this to many police officers, because now it's, where's the defund the police movement now? Where's, you know, the mask mandate now? But the, let's pick the defund the police, okay? That was a big thing, you know? They tore up Minneapolis. And I saw pictures of it on the internet posted, and it said, "This is a, was this Iraq? No, it's Minneapolis. Look, it was a war zone, guys. They destroyed it. Where's all the uproar there now? Instead, they're at the Capitol, January 6th, and some some dude in a whatever outfit he's got on a beaver hat, and I, you know, trying to claim that it's a Christian, the Christians that did it. Yes, there was a bunch of them out there trying to pray." Wasn't very effective, was it? Sorry to say. That's what I'm talking about, the depth of the prayer. This is a true grit moment. Gosh, maybe an old John Wayne movie. You know, get some backbone, guys. But this is what I would tell, I've told many police officers. I was like, man, guys, we owe you an apology as a nation. We threw you under the bus and you still showed up for the right reason because you knew you needed to defend the streets. They clean up our trash, guys, stuff, places that we don't even want to go. Now we need, now they realize, maybe we do need them, kind of, you know, they're being used still again. But they still showed up for the right reasons. That was John McCain, his dad, my dad, the police. And now we're letting this country go to, go to pot. I can play that pretty easily too, because back when I was a kid, it was felonies for selling the stuff. In the 70s, they hated it. Now you can get it at 7-Eleven, CBD oil, and everybody thinks it's the greatest thing since Swiss cheese. The problem with Swiss cheese, it's got a lot of holes in it. But back to what I'm saying about the backbone. Are we going to stand in the gap and in prayer, dedication? 
are we going to let the land we live in become desolate? Are we going to let Jesus in and bow a knee in thanksgiving and prayer and dedication and obedience and not just a bunch of talk? Maybe it's some of this. And not just with your ears, your spiritual heart, spiritual understanding, your discernment, what he's called you to do. What is that? Come on, guys. Saddle up. That's my Father's Day message. Saddle up. All you see, like I said, on the news feeds is... This Democrat said that, that Republican said that. You're not you're not from God if you're not a Republican. You're not you, <laughs> crazy stuff, guys. Angry? I, I live in Dallas. Man, guys, road rages skyrocketed. Seemingly. There hadn't been any mass any shootings or anything, but man, everywhere you go, people are just and they're rude at stores. People have changed doing one of two things. They are turning one or the other. But until we really, really get on a knee and bow before Jesus, our Lord and King, because that was God's plan, not celebrities have said there you know many paths to God to your God or whatever, you know. Churches say that too. And it's just a bunch of hogwash, guys. God set it up detailed and orchestrated time to saddle up guys we really aren't a free nation right now are we no we're not so we're gonna take it back I'm not talking about raiding the capital and trying to bust down the doors and you know bring your 300 rounds with your AR-15 strapped to your butt that ain't gonna work. But I'm a firm believer in the Second Amendment too. We should have the right to bear arms. But that's not the arm that's gonna take. It's gonna take us on our knees, praying, seeking God, and listening. Big piece of it, a huge piece of it, being obedient, listening to the will of the Father and the voice of God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost and His Word. If we just kind of just because it's on information overload, and that's what that's what they want. It's, you know, you just got everybody just kind of, a lot of people just throw out their hands and forget it, you know, it'll be what it is, you know. Well, no, it's not. It's going to be what we, what we make it to be. But we have to make it to be our dedicated first to God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Word, prayer, listening, and being obedient. What's He telling us? It, it's like the upcoming election, guys. I'm not ready to, stop, you know, like I said, you know, my dad fought in Korea. Well, he, we were raised in Minnesota. He was a Democrat. Okay, everybody up there still, they still are the Democratic state all the time, pretty much. Imagine that. I voted for Trump. Imagine that. I didn't vote for him. I thought he was a squeaky clean business guy. I didn't, I told people I'm, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of his because I don't like what went on during the 2016 election and all, all the garbage that was spit out. Voted for him for a stance on abortion was the main reason. But I'm not so sure that I'm willing to sell out for a mean tweet and a gallon of gas just so it's cheap. We better pray about the right guy or gal in the, in the White House for starters. And then there's 400 other positions probably ever in Congress. And then there's governors and there's mayors. And there's, we better start getting on our knees, God, before. Lord God Almighty, for Jesus, King of Kings, find out what He wants. Our 
or we won't have anywhere close to a nation that's anywhere close to free. We're not right now. Say what you want to say. Kind of, sort of, they make us feel like we are. Say something that YouTube doesn't like, Facebook doesn't like, NBC, one of the big, you know, I got a book that got banned by them. Okay, guys, still out. Email me, Jesus is alive in America, at gmail.com, and I'll tell you. I've been out for two years. So they hit the wrong, wrong party, person. Okay. Got a free land, guys. They just, you know, they think your news, your news feed, it's just bull. Not going on like anywhere close to what you think it is. It's chains that seem to bind you, but they serve only to remind you. But it's the chains of this information technology that just twisted it up. It twisted up this, these last elections and who knows how many and how long it's been going on. A while. Swayed a lot of stuff. Perfect example, guys. I'm not even one to vote it for at all. But, you know, as a person, I still pray for, for our current president. I don't agree with pretty much anything he does. But I still pray for him as a person. That he makes it in. That he bows his knee before Jesus. Like everybody else is going to have to do. And gets it right. But Hillary. Man, it was his name. James Comey. Man. It was a calculated, save my job decision on his part. Eight days before the election or how many ever days. Why? Because he thought he stood a better chance with Trump than he would have with her. Because he knew that maybe day one she probably would have canned his butt. Well... <laughs> You know that threw a lot off. That threw a lot off. I, you know, glad or mad that it happened. You know, is is irrelevant. It's just the fact that it, that that happened. Well, so does so does a lot of this stuff that they're just it's hiding in plain sight and they're shoveling it around and hiding money. It's like a shell game. We're not a b bunch of mindless. Idiots, are we? Robots? No. I'm not looking for clones either. I'm not trying to play the Christianese card and say, you know, you're not Christian if you don't vote for Trump or whatever, you know? It's crazy stuff. What I'm saying is, get it from your source, which is God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. But you gotta, you gotta be willing to pray, really seek Him, Earnestly weep and cry. One of my messages, 5 a.m. Weep and pray between the porch and the altar. Guys, we're not we're not falling off the cliff as a nation. We're in free fall. We're gonna hit. Just how hard. But we don't have to. Because we have a father. That is a good father. He so loved the world, he sent his only son. He gave us the best he had, God, not some cheap imitation, not some flaky hogwash, not some, you know, this is a political hack, of course, a little bit, but why do we need a disinformation party or whatever they did or doing? Why can't they give us the right information to make a valid decision? Man, I could go on and on, and I'm not going to because it's getting too long already. Saddle up, guys. And let's pray our land through this turmoil. No more of this divisive stuff. It's not going to change unless we change it. Saddle up, guys. Get some backbone. I'm not talking about being a voice on the internet. The internet's become the latest road rage. I'm talking about full authority 
from heaven above. That voice. That light. But you're not going to get it your way. It's not Burger King. Love you guys. Um, happy Father's Day, and he is a great God. And I am very thankful to be alive today. Love you guys.